Today I wanted to share with you the history of a cruise ship that is often overshadowed by her more famous sister. This is the history of that ship, the Monarch of the Seas. So in 1989, construction began on a sister ship for the largest purpose-built cruise ship in the world, Sovereign of the Seas. The ship's name was to be Monarch of the Seas, and during her construction, she actually caught fire. The damage was severe enough to delay the ship's maiden voyage, and it was only the beginning of a long list of incidents. She was launched in 1991, and immediately after, she stole the title of largest ship in the Royal Caribbean fleet from her sister, Sovereign of the Seas. Monarch was 880 feet long with a beam of 118 feet. The ship had two propellers and two bow thrusters for her propulsion. She had 12 decks and carried 2,700 passengers, and she had a top speed of 22 knots. Monarch's interiors were very similar to Sovereign's. She featured a five-deck tall atrium, two dining rooms, a pool, a two-story buffet, the Viking Crown Lounge, a two-deck tall theater, a casino, as well as a few balcony cabins. These balcony cabins were the first on any Royal Caribbean ship, as Sovereign of the Seas didn't originally have them. In 2003, Monarch went under a renovation and refit, which modernized the ship and installed new features, like a rock climbing wall and a spa. The ship's first few years would go off without any incidents. That was until December the 15th, 1998. She was evacuating a sick passenger in St. Martin, and as she was departing the port, she struck a reef. The ship began to take on water, as three of her watertight compartments were flooded. In order to prevent the ship's sinking, she was intentionally grounded on a sandbar. All passengers and crew were evacuated, and thankfully no lives were lost. The ship would be out of service for three months, however, as repairs were necessary. After this incident, there would be two more. In 2005, the ship suffered a gas leak, which sadly killed three crew members and injured 19 more. And on the morning of January the 30th, 2006, the captain was found dead in his stateroom. He had died of natural causes. Let's step away from these incidents and get back to the history of the ship. In 2007, Monarch became the first major cruise ship to be captained by a woman. She would remain the only female captain until 2010. In 2013, Monarch was transferred to Pulmonter, where she would join her sister ship, Sovereign. Fun fact, Monarch was the final ship ever to be acquired by Pulmonter. For the next six and a half years, the ship would be one of Pulmonter's most popular vessels. This would only stop in 2020, as COVID-19 brought the cruising world to a halt. Pulmonter placed Sovereign and Monarch into a cold layup, and once the company went under, both ships were sold for scrap. Monarch was beached in Aliaga, Turkey on July the 22nd. Scrapping wouldn't start until April 2021, however, as her sister Sovereign was entirely dismantled right beside Monarch. As of today, scrapping on the ship has just begun, and by the end of this year, Monarch of the Seas will be gone. I've always loved the design of Monarch of the Seas. She and her sisters really were some of the most beautiful cruise ships to ever sail. And while I personally prefer the look of Sovereign, I know there are a lot of people who prefer Monarch. The only way I ever got to see either ship, however, was through pictures on the internet. But what about you? Did you sail on Monarch of the Seas? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe, and share, and check out the Lost Ship subreddit. The link will be in the description. Anyways, with all of that out of the way, thank you so much for watching Season 1 of The History Of. I'll see you in the summer with the beginning of Season 2. See you guys then, and peace out.